Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Thursday night at home with Olympus. We're super happy to have you guys here. I see a ton of people joining in from YouTube already, and I see that we've got some, some Facebook friends joining us too. Um, welcome to Autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, I do appreciate all of you guys still joining us from Australia. I see quite a few Australians, so thank you. I know you're in a completely different season than us, but we're happy to have you here tonight. Um, I'm Michelle with Olympus, and I'm just going to do a little housekeeping. Yes, this is being recorded. Yes, you can watch it when it's done, both on our YouTube and our Facebook page. And as we go through the presentation tonight, save your questions for um, our Q&A session that will be at the end. We'll bring your questions up on the screen, and we'll have our guests um, answer them for you. So I think that's it for the do's and don'ts. Um, we have a special guest tonight. She's actually joined us before. If you're familiar with our program, Home with Olympus Plus Me, uh, she was one of our guests on there before. She taught us some really awesome macro snowflake stuff. Um, I'm going to welcome Nicole on. How's it going, Hi. Nicole? Good. How are you? Um, living the dream <laughs> yes. in my little studio. Uh, so, Nicole, tell us a little bit about what, what you like to photograph and where you're from. So I am from Maine. Um, I call myself a nature photographer, but I use that loosely because any day behind the lens is a good day and whatever I'm capturing, whether that's um, I do portraits. So if I'm capturing portraits, buildings, wildlife, I do it all. So. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And so what are you going to talk about a little tonight? Tonight, I'm going to be talking about what you can capture in the forest. So coming off of the Into the Forest month, and now we're doing um, small subjects and big adventures. So the next time that you're out on a trail, you can um, hopefully capture some of the things that I'm going to be talking about tonight. So mushrooms and other flora in the forest. Awesome. I'm really excited to get that rolling. I see um, Emily is on. She was on our Home with Olympus and Me yes. episode two. She said she's super excited for your talk today. Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to let you start going. We're going to okay. bring up your slides now, and then I'll come back at the end, and we'll do some Q&A with everybody, and have a good night. Thank you. So um, I chose the title for this Fungi, Flora, and Folklore because I thought that adding a story to your photos is really important, especially when you're doing small and close-up subjects. And you can make that story either through your editing um, or just through your composition of the photo. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about tonight and just making your photos a little bit more magical as you're exploring the forest. Uh, so first of all, I know we just did a slight introduction, but I wanted to say who I am for those of you who haven't met me yet. My name is Nicole Garrity. You can find my work on Instagram at Nicole Garrity Photography. Um, as I said before, I am located in Maine. Most of my photos come from New England, whether that's Maine, New Hampshire, um, sometimes Connecticut and Rhode Island as well. So I've been shooting only for about a year and a half now um, with the Olympus cameras. Before that, I was a cell phone photographer um, and I dabbled in photography in high school, learned how to do the black, the dark room, um, developing your own photos and things like that. But really, I've only been seriously shooting for about a year and a half. Um, I chose my Olympus setup because I wanted a camera that was small and that was easy for me to take on any adventure that I go on. I also have a three and a half year old daughter. And when I first started shooting with Olympus, I was carrying her around in a backpack. So I really didn't want a heavy camera with me while I had her in a backpack on the trail um, because it just, it would have been too much for me. And I also really like the image stabilization in Olympus. I get really shaky hands sometimes. So having that added image stabilization was extremely important for me. And then um, what I love most about macro and close-up photography is that, like I said earlier, I have a young daughter and I like to include her as much as I can when I'm out photographing. 95% of the time she is with me. And I found that doing macro and close-up photography was a really fun way for her to learn about the environment around us whether that's she finds a cricket or a spider and I take a macro photo of that 
and she sees what it looks like when it's up close. It's really been, it's been really fun for her to see that. And I think it took some of the scariness from insects. Sometimes kids can be afraid of insects. It took kind of the scariness away because all of a sudden she'd see like the spider's cute little fuzzy face and she would love it. So that's how I started with macro photography. And it's really become one of my favorite forms of photography. So I'm excited to share with you some of my tricks and tips on what I do when I'm out in the forest. Um, so first let's talk about my gear and what I use. Uh, I did start with the EM, the EM10 Mark III and then I upgraded to the EM1 Mark III for the simple reason that it's weather sealed. And I found in my first few months of photography that having a weather sealed camera was going to be extremely important for me. Um, it doesn't matter if it's snowing, raining, what the weather is like, or if I'm by the ocean, I want my camera to be ready to go. And I don't wanna have to worry about having extra rain gear or anything like that on my camera. So that's why I chose the EM1. Um, I also have the 30 millimeter macro that is not weather sealed, but I, I have used it in the snow and in light rain and it's been okay, but just be careful with that one. The 60 millimeter macro, I just got that in and that is weather sealed. So you can use that in any weather conditions. Um, I also use the seven to 14 millimeter pro for close up. I find that because it's an ultra wide angle, you can really get very creative with your shots and the 12 to 45 millimeter. I like because you can actually focus pretty closely with that one. I would say it's comparable almost to the 30 millimeter as how close, as far as how close you can get to your subject and still have your auto focusing working. I do prefer using an auto focus. I know some of you might like manual focus only, and that's totally fine. Um, you can still get really, really close. And then my 300 millimeter, that one is such a good all around lens. I think a lot of people look at that and they think wildlife, but it works really, really good for macro and close up photography. Uh, just give it a try. Cause you can also actually set it to close, focus closer, if I can get my words straight, focus closer to your subject and you can get some really cool shots of insects that maybe you wouldn't be able to get close to them, like dragonflies and things like that. So the next time you're out with your 300 millimeter, give that a try for some insects and even blossoms and flowers. It's really fun to play around with. I do use a flash when I'm doing macro. I use the Godox V862. Um, Olympus has really good flashes as well. This is just the one that I already had in my kit, so this is what I've been using. I will probably upgrade to one of the Olympus ones soon though, um, once it's in my budget. So the last part of my essential kit is my AK diffuser. Um, it looks like this, I know I'm really small on the screen, but it looks like this. And it has a little light inside that you can turn on and off and that you can illuminate your subject because sometimes when you're doing macro photography and you're getting really up close, you block out a lot of light and natural light. So it can be hard to focus or even see your subject sometimes depending on how close up you're getting, especially when you're in on a forest trail and you have the thick of the trees over the top of you it really blocks out a lot of light. So I found that having that extra light is really nice and it has a very light screen in the front of it to help diffuse your flash really nicely. So if you're doing macro and you haven't made your own diffuser or you've been looking for something to use on your flash, something like that is really, really nice to have. And then for um, extras to keep in your kit, a camera or lens brush, one that you preferably don't use on your lenses anymore. I always keep one in my bag because it's really nice to be able to clean up the mushrooms that you're photographing or even ferns or things like that and just get those little specks off of there. Um, maybe fallen pine needles, anything that accumulates on the top of them. Also a flashlight. So if you don't have a diffuser that has a light built into it, you can use a flashlight or a small torch to light the top of your subject to add a little bit more light to it or just to add to your composition. And then a spray bottle with water so that you can fake rain if you need to. 
Um, I find that sometimes having those extra water droplets just adds more to the photo. It can add a magical touch to it. So those are what I keep in my gear bag at all times. Um, and then, and also another important thing is where are you gonna find your subjects? So a lot of the trails that I walk, like I said earlier, I bring my daughter with me. So we do pretty easy hiking trails around the area. They have the mulch beds, everything like that. Um, and usually when you're on a groomed trail, they're moving the debris off to the sides. So look at the edge of the trails um on that debris there's usually quite a bit of mushrooms because mushrooms are used to decay there's usually a lot of them on old stumps and fallen logs in the crevices even on um, trees that are growing you can find them everywhere i know in maine it's been a really good mushroom season i don't know if i've just been paying attention to it more or if they're just flourishing this year because of all of the rain that we've gotten but there has been a ton uh, another tip is to get your friends and family involved. If you're having a hard time finding mushrooms and you really want to get out there and photograph them, let some friends know, let your family know. And I know probably 50% of the mushrooms, maybe more, have come from my mom giving me a call and saying, hey, I just found this really cool mushroom and I think you should come take a picture of it. Or I get a text message from friends like, there's a mushroom by my house. It looks really cool. I think that you should come photograph it. So get them involved and you'll probably find a lot more than you would on your own. Um, I know even my daughter will run around the yard and say, mommy, I found a mushroom. Come take a picture of it. So it's been fun to have everybody involved and it makes it exciting for everyone when you show them the photo that you got of it. And they're like, oh my goodness, that's what you made it look like. So definitely friends and family, and then look closely. So I channeled my inner Brooke Little Bear for one of the photos on here to show the size of the mushroom versus my hand. These mushrooms were tiny and they were barely sticking out of the ground. I had to really get down there and move some of the pine needles out of the way so they weren't sticking up in front of my lens because they were, they were tiny. So definitely look closely if you're having a hard time finding them. Most mushrooms are really, really small and you can make them look really cool. So the last thing that I have to say for where to find your subject is try to find beauty in the simple things. If you're having a hard time finding mushrooms right now, especially in New England, um, and I know parts of the Pacific Northwest, we're getting a lot of foliage and leaves of different colors, even right now when there are just spots of red or yellow coming onto the green, they're really beautiful. So take some time of, you can even just photograph the leaf by itself, hold it up to the sun and get some of those veins coming through the leaves and the different colors. Um, grass, even when you have the grass that's bent over with some droplets of water on it. You could even try refraction photography off of that. And there's always a lot of ferns. If you can't find anything else, there's always a fern wherever you go and they're really cool and you can make them look really magical. So just try to find beauty in the simple things. I do also wanna discuss mushroom safety and trail etiquette. They're very important. Um, especially when it comes to mushrooms, my number one rule is if you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Like if you can't properly identify exactly what that mushroom is, you don't know if it's toxic or if it isn't. Some mushrooms are also toxic to touch. So you want to make sure that you're being really careful when you're handling the mushrooms. Um, and never guess because I know um, one thing that or one type of mushroom that looks really similar to another is chicken of the woods that grows on trees and stumps looks very similar to the jack-o-lantern mushroom. The jack-o-lantern mushroom is toxic. Chicken of the woods tastes like chicken. So you don't want to guess wrong on that one. It can make you really sick. So make sure that you're using either a forest guide or a mushroom guide um, or that you're learning from someone who knows how to forage mushrooms if you're also looking to forage at the same time that you're out there photographing them. I always use a brush to clean off the mushrooms 
because if you touch them with your hands, your to the toxins can go through your skin and it can also make you sick. I know some people say that it can't, some people say that it can, but it's better to err on the side of caution and just use a little brush. I know we all have one favorite lens brush and probably one that we don't use as much or maybe an old makeup brush or something like that that we can clean to use for these situations. I'm also a big believer of pack in and pack out. So whatever you bring with you, make sure that you can pack it up and bring it out with you. Um, I know having a three-year-old, I have a lot of snacks that come with me and I'd make sure that we pack up all those snack wrappers, put them back in my photography bag and bring them out with you. I know that Olympus is also a big supporter of leave no trace photography. So just making sure that you're cleaning up after yourselves and being really careful where you step as well. I always try to stay on trail as much as possible because when you're going off trail, you're risking stepping on some really important flora that the forest needs and you could be killing some essential parts of the ecosystem if you're going off trail. And then the last thing with trail etiquette is just to be aware of your surroundings. We're sharing these trails with other people and we're also sharing them with wildlife. And I know that moose can be very quiet and they can sneak right up on you and you will never know that they're there. Same with black bears in this area. They're scary quiet. So just make sure that you know what's going on around you and that you're paying attention I know sometimes when we're photographing, we can get really into our subject and we kind of tune out everything that's around us, but we want to make sure that we're paying attention to everything that is on the trails. I did want to talk about tonight, do you need a macro lens in your kit? Um, so for this, I did a comparison between my 30 millimeter macro and the MSUICO 7 to 14 millimeter ultra wide angle lens. And I just made sure that I used the same exact settings. I took the photos from the same exact position and I just wanted to show the differences between them. For the 30 millimeter macro, you get this really, really nice soft bokeh. And especially at the 3.5, I find with a macro lens, the aperture usually tends to come across a little bit finer than the 3.5. So it's more comparable, in my opinion, to about a 2.8 as far as what you're getting for bokeh and what's in focus. Uh, the slug is definitely more in focus with the 30 millimeter than it is with the 7 to 14. You're pulling a lot more detail. But with the 7 to 14, I got this really cool little lens flare coming off because on the 7 to 14 millimeter, because it's an ultra wide angle, the lens is slightly bubbled. Um, so I got this pretty lens flare, which I love personally because I think it adds a little bit of magic to it. And you're also getting a lot more foreground, background, you're getting more on the sides of the mushrooms, and it still pulled a lot of detail. So. I just thought that that was an interesting comparison and I'll go through in the next couple slides talking about doing close-up photography with and without a macro lens. So close-up photography without a macro lens, these are things in my opinion of what you can do with it. So I find if you want more versatility and you want to be able to go out with just your camera and just one lens, maybe choosing a macro lens wouldn't be right for you. Maybe you wanna use the seven to 14 millimeter or the 12 to 45 millimeter. You can capture a lot more as far as, you know, if you see a little squirrel run up or um, if you're also doing landscape, if you're hiking a mountain, you wanna to get to the top and you wanna do landscape, but you don't wanna bring a full gear kit with you. Maybe one of those lenses might be a better option versus a macro, even when you're doing close up. Um, and then I also find that you can add a lot more to your composition without the, um, macro lens. When you're using like the wide angle lens, for instance, you can get a lot more on the sides. You can get a lot more on the back as far as composition goes, and you can play around and get creative with your shots, um, uh, with either way you go, any way you go. 
So I'm going to talk about a couple of these photos in more detail, uh, just so you can see them larger and kind of what I tried to do with the non-macro lens. So the first one, I tried to give them little titles. So I call these ones the little bonnets because the mushrooms are often known as bonnet mushrooms. Uh, there's a bunch of different varieties of them. So for this shot, I tried to place the subject off center and I used that as my focal point using a really fine aperture of f2.8 because I wanted the main focus to be the mushrooms. But when I found them, I thought that the stump and the tree growth around them and the moss was really, really cool. So I wanted to use a wide angle on this to capture that. And I slowed my shutter slightly to grab some more ambient light coming in from the top. And I found that having that wide open aperture allowed me to get a lot more, um, sorry, a much more shallow depth of field and have my mushroom in focus, but I also still in the foreground kept some of the texture from the tree bark before the rest of it went into a bokeh. So I just thought that that was a neat way to photograph a little mushroom, but also kind of capture what it was growing out of and what was surrounding it. And then my fallen leaves. So these leaves I found on the trail when I was walking down to the waterfall. I picked them up along the trail and I brought them with me because I had this idea in mind that maybe I could do a close-up photo with a really interesting background. So I think that that's another thing that you can play around with when you're doing close-up photography and you're not using a macro lens is think about your background and maybe do something that's not traditional with your background. Like in, for instance, most of the time when people are capturing a waterfall, they want the waterfall to be the main subject. In this one, I decided to have my leaves be the main subject. I thought that they were really beautiful in color. They were a really good contrast against the dark black rocks of the waterfall and the dark water. So I thought that that was something that would be fun to play around with. And I did this specifically for this presentation to see what I could find or how I could challenge myself, I guess, to be more creative and thinking out of the box when it comes to close up photography. And then we're getting into close up photography with a macro lens. I love my macro lens. I'm not going to lie. It's in my kit all the time. I find that the macro lens adds a really nice soft bokeh to your photos, uh, probably softer than I can get with any of my other lenses. And like I said earlier, even at a aperture of 3.5, you're getting a lot of softness to your photos. And I do think that it's comparable to probably a standard lens 2.8. Um, it allows you to pull a lot of detail from your subject. You can get crazy detail out of a macro lens and you can get crazy close to your subjects, especially with a 30 millimeter. You can get probably like a fingertip away from your subject and still be able to focus with your autofocus. And it's, in my opinion, easier to use with a flash and control your lighting. Um, like I said earlier, when I'm using my diffuser, a lot of light is blocked out. So I'm in control of exactly how my subject is being lit. And that's not as easy to do, in my opinion, with a standard lens as it is to do with a macro lens. And going into a couple of these photos, I decided to name this one Folklore because ferns have such a fairy tale story behind them. And they're one of the oldest plants on the planet and they are often brought up in a lot of fairy tales. So I thought that folklore was an appropriate name for this shot. I used my aperture wide open because I wanted only a little bit of the fern in focus just to add more mystery. And then I used the light on the top of my diffuser to add a really soft lighting to the top of the fern. I didn't use my flash on this photo. I just used that light that was on my diffuser. Ferns are everywhere and you can play around with them really easily to make a shot. Sometimes you can shoot from above and you can get all the textures of the ferns growing on top of each other. You can have just like a little drop of water coming off the end. You can really get creative with ferns and they have a beautiful pattern and texture to them on their own. 
So definitely if you're just getting into close-up photography, I highly recommend trying out photographing ferns and seeing what you can create. Um, and as I've already stated, the bokeh with the 30 millimeter is just chef's kiss. It's so good. So I definitely love my macro. And then this one, I have my hidden treasures, which is one single little mushroom growing out of the moss in the forest floor. I went really, really low to make this mushroom appear a lot larger than it was. And I also positioned it off center so that your eye is kind of leading across a photo from the moss to the main subject. Uh, the 30 millimeter, I'll show you a comparison. So the 30 millimeter is a really small lens. It's tiny. And then compared to like the seven to 14 millimeter, you can get a lot closer with this one versus this lens. So I'll just hold that for a second. Even just circumference wise, you can get much closer to the ground with the 30 millimeter versus something like the 7 to 14. Um, so that allowed me to get really in there because it was a quite a tight space off of the side of a fallen log and it had the moss growing on top of it and then the little mushroom growing out of it. I did use my flash on this one to bring out some more detail in the gills of the mushroom because it was a very small mushroom, I don't think that I would have gotten as much detailing in the gills if I didn't use my flash. It was about the size of my finger. So it was very little growing out of here. And then my overall thoughts between the two. I think that a macro lens is a really good addition to your kit if you're looking to add one or if you're getting really into close-up photography and thinking maybe you wanna bring it to the next level, you can't go wrong with a macro lens. Um, I started out with a 30 millimeter and I just got the 60 millimeter. I haven't had a chance to play around with it yet. So I'm really excited to play around with the 60 millimeter macro. I find that you can capture an incredible amount of detail with a macro lens that maybe you wouldn't get on a standard lens. And on the other side of it, I think traditionally these days, most macro shots are not the one-to-one -one or one-to-two scale that we usually see when you're doing close up insect and arachnid photography um, those ones you're most of the people who are doing specifically that type of macro photography are doing the traditional one-to-one -one or one-to-two but like me who is doing kind of everything in mushrooms and ferns it's not the traditional one-to-one -one or one-to-two so at the end of the day if you don't have a macro lens i don't think that it's going to be the end of the world um, using a non-macro lens can be really fun when it's coming to creating your shots and when it comes to trying to figure out what you can do for a background and a foreground. I think that that allows for a lot more creativity, especially with the ultra wide angle lens. I found that um, I'm really trying to be more outside of the box when it comes to my composition when I'm using a wide angle lens. And I don't think that you really need a macro lens unless you're photogra you're photographing for detail. I know I tried last winter to photograph snowflakes with a traditional lens and I just didn't get the same uh, outcome as I did with the macro lens. My macro lens caught a lot more detail from the snowflakes, especially even in um, summertime and spring when you're getting into insects and arachnid photography. You're not going to get the same detail with a standard lens as you would with a macro lens. So if those are things that you're thinking that you might want to do uh, and you don't have a macro lens yet, you might want to look into finding a macro lens or adding one to your kit. Other than that, I think the ultra wide angle lenses or the 12 to 45 millimeter will work just fine for whatever you're trying to do for close up photography. I do want to talk about composing your shot, especially with um, just trying to make something a little bit more magic. For mushrooms, I really recommend getting low, as low as you can, because it makes them look a lot larger. A lot of mushrooms are really small or they're in funky places. So getting low can absolutely add a lot more to your composition. Also trying a few different angles for this one. I started shooting straight onto the mushroom versus the side. 
and I was just getting it so it looked like one mushroom stacked on top of the other. And I wasn't a fan of it. I'm like, you know, this, it's not working for me. Uh, I don't really like the composition of this. And I was about to give up and I walked around the side of it and I was like, wait a minute. This adds so much more to the composition. When I looked at the background, there was really nice ambient lighting coming through the trees. I had the ferns off to the side and it just kind of made it, it went full circle just by switching where I was standing. So if you're not liking a shot and how it's coming out, just try moving a little bit and maybe it'll make a completely different shot. This is now one of my favorite photos that I've taken so far. Hey all, I think that we might have just had a quick technical difficulty. So I'm just going to hang out for one second, hope that we get Nicole back. I think she should be popping right back on. I'm sure she notices that her camera disconnected. I do apologize. You know, it's the nature of the game when we're doing these live shows is sometimes we have a complication. I see her. She's back. Yes, Yay! I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's okay. We're just happy to have you back because yes. I could not do your presentation for you. <laughs> no. So I don't know where it left off and where it cut out. Um, I think it was talking about thinking about your background and what you're capturing in your background and positioning your subject off center. That way you can play around a lot more with what else is coming into play with your photos. Also look for leading lines in your composition to draw your um, viewer's eye to your main subject. In this one, I had the ferns kind of falling in and then also coming down from the left of the photo, you can follow the gradient of the tree stump. So that's um, how I came up with the composition for this one. And I think just really thinking about where you're standing will help a lot when it comes to photographing mushrooms. They're small subjects and Sometimes standalone, you need to add a little bit more to them to add interest to the photo. And then camera settings that I use. I always like to lower my shutter speed slightly to allow in a little bit more ambient light, especially when you're in the thick of it in the forest. Um, it can get really dark. So slowing the shutter just a little bit allows that light to come in where it's needed. You can always use a flash as backup. And then I like to use single point autofocus with the back button focus. And I like to use the like the finest point possible because mushrooms are really, really small. So you want to make sure that you're getting that focus point exactly where you want it in order for your photo to come out the way that you want it to. You can also play with focus stacking. Um, I used slight focus stacking in this photo because I wanted the front mushroom to be completely in focus and I wanted to make sure that none of the background came into focus. So if I had just done, if I had done it without focus stacking, only the top of the mushroom would have been in focus and the stem would have been slightly out of focus. So having a very small, I think it was about three or four photos for this stack and that allowed it so that the top of the mushroom and the stem were in focus and the background was nice and blurred the way that I wanted it to be. And then also play around with your aperture. If you can get away with um, closing down your aperture a little bit and play with having a little bit more in focus, it really is gonna depend on your lighting for that one. But if you can play around with it and you have time to play around with it, you might as well and you might create something really cool. And I forgot to mention the focus stacking does happen in camera with the Olympus system. So you don't have to mess around with it out of camera if you don't want to. It does save all the images if you want to focus stack it yourself in a different program after. Uh, and then my favorite part is editing my photos. I find editing my photos to be really therapeutic actually. It's very calming for me to edit. I love editing. If you don't love editing, um, this might not be for you, but for all of us who do love editing, this is definitely the slide for you. So I always like to play around and adjust my lighting and my shadows 
I definitely brought up the shadows in this one to bring out some more detail in the mushroom. Uh, and I added a light hit. I added that in Photoshop. In Lightroom, you can also use a radial filter to add more lighting or light hits to your photos. I really like adding light hits to my mushroom photos, which I think you guys could probably see from the past photos. I think that it adds a really whimsical feel to them. And I know some people um, may not be into adding after effects into their photos, but for me, editing is part of the art of photography. So I definitely love adding light hits and things like that where I can. Um, you have to find a unique style that's your own. I really like, and if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably noticed, I really like muted tones and I really like soft tones. Um, my style is very tonal in, in full. So I played around with the tones a lot in this. I really muted down my greens. I brought up the warmth in the photo and I cropped it slightly, but you can definitely crop a lot more than this. I know some people with the micro four thirds get a little bit nervous about cropping their photos. Don't be nervous. It's fine to crop in your photos and really play around with the composition even more when you get home. And we all want to talk about, I know it's different seasons. I know the people in Australia, you guys are in summer. So here's a little bit for you as well. Macro season, in my opinion, is every season. So in autumn, we have the mushrooms, we have colorful leaves, there's ferns. Um, the ferns right now are changing really pretty colors. And it's really fun to get out there. The weather is gorgeous this time of year too. In winter that we're gonna be coming into soon, there's snowflakes, which I am a huge fan of macro snowflake photography. I will stay out there forever photographing snowflakes until my fingers are frozen and I can't press the shutter anymore. Um, also icicles are really cool to do with macro. You can even get, you can play around with refraction photography with the drops coming off the end of the icicles. That's really fun. I played around with it a little bit last year. I'm definitely gonna try more this year because last year I didn't know too much about refraction, but I have learned a lot over this last year about it. So I'm definitely interested to try doing some refraction off of um, the icicles. And then also pine cones. Pine cones can be really fun, especially if you have fresh snow that's fallen, you can do snowflakes off of the pine cones. So just adding a little bit more to your composition that way. I know for this snowflake, I just used a piece of felt in the background. You can also play with it around with that with using different materials for different textures, different colors to have different effects. And then obviously when you have fresh fallen snow, you can photograph it pretty much anywhere. Uh, and then in spring, we have new growth coming through. So this, I was just walking around my backyard trying to play around with the macro lens and I found it had just rained and it was slightly misting still. So there was this little water droplet sitting perfectly in between these two leaves. It looked like a little pearl and it had the water droplets around the side. I was like, that's really cool. So I grabbed a quick shot of that one and there was also a bunch of fiddleheads coming up. And in spring, we have a lot of blossoms. So spring is really fun for macro season. And in summer, when it starts to warm up, we have insects, flowers, arachnids, pretty much anything that you can think of for macro season, it's in the summer. You can get it all. Uh, with this macro shot of the dragonfly, I actually used my 300 millimeter F4 Pro and I used the 1.4 teleconverter on it as well. And I also like using that for um, my bumblebee shots because I'm allergic to bees. So it's not always safe for me to get really close with the 30 millimeter. So I prefer to use my 300 when I'm doing insects um, like bees or dragonflies. And in conclusion, I just wanna talk about making sure that you're all set for when you go out and where you're going. So obviously plan your outing if you can know where you're going, know your trails, um, make sure you read over the trail map. You don't want to be getting lost, especially in New England. It gets really cold. So make sure you're planning where you're going and that you have all of your essentials. And that doesn't just mean camera gear. It means food, water, snacks, anything that you need to have on you. Make sure that you're prepared. 
and also bring an extra jacket right now in new england it's wear your jacket in the morning and then be too hot in the afternoon that's the weather that we're having right now um but it also cools down really quickly at night so make sure that you're prepared for that with an extra sweater or a light jacket and make sure that you're looking closely and everywhere if you're looking for mushrooms because they are everywhere especially in new england right now and i also like to say to find inspiration with every step it doesn't have to necessarily just be mushrooms it can be like i said earlier ferns grass pine pine needles anything that you can find just try it out there's no harm in trying to take a picture of something that maybe you haven't seen somebody share before or that you walk by and you're like you know that's pretty cool and you just want to snap a photo of it it doesn't have to be a perfect photo it just has to be your photo so definitely try to find inspiration everywhere you go and have fun whatever you're doing just make sure that you're having fun and it shouldn't be stressful to be behind the lens i know a lot of us use this or use photography as a stress reliever so don't get stressed out when you're out there a lot of the mushrooms are really not going anywhere it's not like wildlife photography you don't have to worry about them chasing you down or anything like that um, just have fun with it take your time and enjoy every step so thank you <laughs> all right let me bring us back up so i can see you there you are Hey. Uh, that was great. Thank I love you. your mushroom shots. I like the ones <laughs> where you can kind of see the whole world around them. I'm a huge yes. fan of wide angle macros for sure. Me too. It's a whole, so, it's definitely a whole new world for the wide angle. <laughs> right. So a couple of questions I saw earlier that I wanted to bring back because there was a nice person that asked one. Um, can you show us the AK diffuser? Does it fold yes. down and get smaller. Somebody was asking about that. So I know it, it looks or... intimidating. You can, un it has snaps across the back and you can unsnap all of them and it folds flat and it has snaps on this side as well. You can have it fold completely flat. Um, I usually don't, I usually just leave it assembled and I use the Velcro tabs to make a loop and I loop it onto where I would attach a tripod to my camera bag. And I just carry it around like that. I get a lot of questions on it, but <laughs> it's just like hanging off the back of my backpack. <laughs> so somebody asked, and I, I don't know the answer, how do you get under the mushrooms to shoot the gills? This can be important when trying to ID the yes. mushroom. You lay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I... I have been known to just full on lay on the ground and get as low as possible. And if you're having, if you really want to ID the mushroom and you're having a hard time getting there with your camera, you can also pull out your phone to um, like take a, I don't know, a lighted shot from underneath the mushroom that way as well. If you really want to identify what it is and you can't quite get low enough with your camera. Oh, that's kind of a neat idea too. Have you ever used your phone to kind of like illuminate yes. it from below? Oh, that's yes. a neat idea. <laughs> that's great. Um, somebody did ask earlier also, um, what camera mode do you tend to shoot in when you're doing your macro stuff? I use manual. I know some people prefer shutter priority or aperture priority. I always shoot in manual. So besides the focusing, I always use autofocus, but manual yeah. for all of my settings. Nice. Do you bring like a blanket with you to lay down on the ground or do you just get right in <laughs> no, there? No, I just and... get right in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so dainty. I'm like, here's my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was asking, do you know the model number for your AK diffuser? I don't know anything about this diffuser. So this is um, all you. It doesn't have a model number, but they are custom to what your camera and your flash is to make sure that they're fitting properly. And I know the guy who makes them is also an Olympus shooter. So he is very good with making sure it'll fit your Olympus gear. I like that it has a light in it. I have yeah. the most hodgepodge diffuser <laughs> made out of like styrofoam. and <laughs> It's really cool. I, the light I probably use more than my actual flash now because it adds just such a soft lighting on top of whatever you're photographing. Yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes <laughs> flash can be a little too much in macro. Yeah. Somebody asked if you ever use a ring light for your macros, but I'm assuming no because you have such a cool I diffuser don't, Yeah, because the diffuser, I don't use a ring light for them. Um. Somebody was asking, do you ever need to focus stack your photos? I know you did kind of cover that, but is that yes. something that you regularly use in your macro or just every now um, and then? 
I use it more if I'm doing insects or snowflakes, like my snowflake shots, every single one of them are stacked. With my mushrooms, I find that just doing a light stacking because I like to have more out of focus for my mushrooms just to add a little bit more mystery to the photos. But I think you can't go wrong with photo stacking. Absolutely give it a try and you'll, I mean, you can take two pictures. You can take one with the focus stacking, you can take one without and try to figure out which way you like it better. So yeah, it doesn't take any extra time really, <laughs> especially with it being in body. I agree. Although I did try to focus stack a jumping spider that jumped me no, no. the other day. That didn't work out very well. <laughs> um, <laughs> he jumped on my camera too. Of course he did. Terrifying. <laughs> um, That's where they always go. Somebody asked, why do you prefer to use back button focusing? I prefer to use back button focusing because my hands are really shaky. And sometimes I accidentally focus where I didn't mean to by double clicking the shutter if I do the half click. So that's why I prefer back button. I like that. Yeah. I get really shaky in macro too. Somebody yeah. asked earlier if um, also, and I have no idea where it is in the comments, you guys ask a lot of questions, which I love. Um, do you use a tripod or is all of this handheld? I don't use a tripod, it's all handheld. The only time I use a tripod is if I'm doing moon or long exposure, so. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, somebody also asked, what camera bag do you use? Okay, my camera bag is huge. <laughs> so I use the Manhattan Manfrotto 50 liter. It's really, really big, but I really like it, especially having a three-year-old. It carries all of our stuff on the top and then all of my camera gear on the bottom. So it's it everything. Is it hard to hike with a bag that big though? It's <laughs> not because it has um, a chest strap and a waist strap. So it makes it nice and convenient for hiking. That's nice. Um, I'm going back through. Somebody asked if you use your flash in manual as well, or do you use the uh, the, the TTL? Godox has TTL, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, I use it in manual because I like to control how much output it's giving. I usually use it on the lowest settings. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's at one one twenty eighth because I don't want to add too much light and risk overshooting and blowing out some of the details. Smart. Mm -hmm. And then somebody asked, do you use extension tubes? That also got brought up earlier that you can use extension tubes if you're on a budget and you're not quite ready to jump into yes. macro. I don't use extension tubes. Um, I had played around with them and I just wasn't getting the details that I wanted. But the 30 millimeter macro is actually extremely affordable, especially if you can use find it in the refurbished shop, which is what I did as I got it refurbished from Olympus. And it's tiny, it can go everywhere. And it was budget friendly. So if you don't want to get the 60 millimeter yet, the 30 millimeter is a great option. And it's always to remember, you know, there's so many lenses out there, especially in micro four thirds, right? That focus incredibly close, the 12 to 45, the 12 to 40 focuses yes. at full zoom really close. I've done some amazing, um, you know, floral photography in the summertime or in the spring when all the flowers start popping, because you can zoom all the way in and get really close. You can really kind of think outside the box and try one of the lenses you already have because micro yeah. four thirds lenses will focus really close. So if you're still kind of new to that, close focus world, you can definitely, uh, they definitely test some of your will. zooms. <laughs> I was using the 12 to 100 for the longest time for all oh, of my yeah. close up before I got my 30 millimeter. Yeah, also focus is really close. And when it you're does. all the way zoomed in, you get that really nice <laughs> bokeh. It, yeah. yeah, I love that one. Um, sorry, I'm reading through the comments. Okay. Apologize, guys. <laughs> Somebody said consider renting. Actually, I think we caught up with those. Okay. Um, so I put the banner up a couple of times. Now you can take all these tips and be prepared for October 15th because apparently it is hashtag National Photography Day <laughs> for those of us in North America. Sorry, Australia. Maybe you guys have another mushroom day. I don't know why we have a mushroom day, but we should celebrate it and you should share Mushrooms all your mushroom really cool. photos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> share all your mushroom photos. Tag us at Get Olympus. We want to see your mushroom photos. We hope that you will take some of Nicole's tips. Yes. Um, and please actually, send them to me if you take some because I love seeing them. So send me a message on Instagram and show me what you've captured. Oh, and Dixie just said, we always leave this out in all of our macro things. 
Dixie said the TG series is nice for macro for a beginner. Yes. The tough cameras, the TG6, TG5, they all have microscope mode on them. And there's a diffuser light you can purchase for the front. It is my daughter's absolute favorite thing to do is go around and take ultra microscope macro photos <laughs> with that thing. Um, and then she can drop it and it's fine because <laughs> it's indestructible. Right. Yes. <laughs> so definitely a good option. Thank you so much, Dixie, for sharing that because we always, we always forget to mention the poor TG6. It's an awesome camera. <laughs> We got to stop leaving it out. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to let you get off here and yes. hopefully feed your family. They're probably yes. starving. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say thank you to everybody that joined us. We will be back in a couple weeks time with another episode. Until then, the UK, um, our counterparts over in the UK are doing some lives this next coming week. So definitely check them out. And thank you so much, Nicole. Thanks for thank joining you. us tonight and sharing thank your you information. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed yes. it. <laughs> It was super awesome. We um, love the comment section. We love when you guys help each other out down there. It's always so great to see you guys all interacting. And we look forward to the next time we can spend with you. Bye.